this. I'm gonna do an evening one. Uh, just got back from a second little road trip down to North Carolina to um, help winterize FEMA camps. Uh, good experience. Uh, different than the Florida trip, but similar. Uh, same company, just uh, different circumstances, that kind of stuff. But, um, got me to thinking, you know, because we keep going down with groups of guys from not only our sober house, but um, other sober houses. Uh, same company, just different locations. Some of these guys have two, three years sobriety and are what would be considered, you know, uh, RAs or house monitors or whatever, you know, leadership of some kind. And I guess what struck me as odd is on the two trips I've been on now, the, the two occasions I've gotten to meet some of the upper echelon. Um, I was genuinely surprised at how, from an outside perspective, how some of them had some pretty glaring cracks in their foundation. Not that I haven't experienced those same cracks, because I have, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't recognize them. Um, but it made me to, th it got me thinking about one of the big problems I see in early sobriety, in any sobriety, in recovery. And I know I suffered from this numerous times, which is why I've been in and different inpatient rehabs, um, and that's the identity crisis. You know, and it happens with any kind of addict or any kind of addiction. Um, you, because you're going to this external source for validation, or to numb, or to escape, whatever it is, you start to associate your, you know, your your ego and your identity start to associate with that particular activity of choice, that form of escapism, that lifestyle, whatever it is. Um, so that when you do remove said substance or activity from your life to start to heal and recover, part of what happens is you don't know who you are. You do in the core. But there's a lot of people that suffer from, I've met guys and, and women who they don't even know what their favorite music is, what they like to watch, what they like to eat, uh, because they've gone so far down a particular rabbit hole. Um, and it's, branches into all areas of their life, um, especially when you're talking about codependence and people with certain types of intimacy addictions. Um, but it's one of the more difficult things to overcome. It's also one of the scariest things. And I think maybe that's the, the core and the issue and crux of people's unwillingness to change. It's not that they're incapable, it's there's a fear of the unknown. They're afraid of letting go of the old version of themselves, as we all are. One of my sisters told me one time, healing hurts, and it's very true. For me, the switch that finally clicked was to and learn learn to embrace the uncomfortableness, um, 
realizing that by taking accountability and finally making the decision to try to become the person I knew I was inside um, and fully embrace my power was an opportunity to reinvent myself. And that's not to say that that decision happened overnight. No, it didn't. Um, and it took some time. And I still struggle with it to some degree. Old habits die hard. It's a very true saying. Um, you know, when it comes to addiction and stuff like that, specifically substance abuse addiction, it's rarely is it just about the substance. You know, when, when certain substances, sure, there is a physical aspect to the addiction, but that usually within a couple of weeks to a month is, is over with. Um, the rest of it's just psychological and emotional and spiritual. Um, you know, but the whole identity crisis thing, it's something I'll definitely make some more videos on because it ties into so many things. It ties into the accountability aspect. It ties into other things I've talked about as far as, you know, how the subconscious mind works and how it validates itself. Um, getting through the identity crisis, which some would call shadow work, um, and when you take it to a slightly deeper level, dark night of the soul, which is pretty much exactly what it is. Um, Dark Night of the Soul is a very confusing time, very chaotic. Um, and just like with the identity crisis or the ego deflation and ego death when it comes to sobriety, uh, it's necessary and it doesn't happen all at once. It happens in layers can't expect to deprogram and reprogram, uh, you know, half of a lifetime of learned behaviors in 30 days or six months, even a year. Um, but as I've said in other videos, you know, luckily recovery is progressive just like addiction. While relapse is not a requirement, it is statistically probable, highly probable. Um, I've, in the last 20 years of my journey, I think I've seen maybe two people who've actually gotten any length of what I would call real sobriety time on their first time through. Um, it usually takes multiple attempts. But it's the same thing with your addictions, you know, especially substance use addiction. Nobody starts off knowing how to do their drug or choice the best way they know. No, it doesn't work like that. Nobody starts off with a super high tolerance. Um, so, you know, for the alcoholics, nobody starts off being able to drink a fifth a day. It just doesn't happen like that. You build up to it. It's the same thing with the process, you know, hence the cliche, progress, not perfection, so, um, the identity crisis also ties into the video that I did about uncomfortable silences, um, so, more to come, and I might do some videos on Einstein in particular, idea of gravity. And yes, I will tie that in there as well. There is a method to my madness and madness to my method. So, this thought.